A shinobi named Gabamara foils attempted executions by beheading and burning and curses his inability to die. He explains to his interrogator that he underwent a Wagaku village shinobi training and developed a superhuman body and became an efficient killer. He says he was married to the clan chief's daughter, but after he asked the chief for permission to leave, he was betrayed to the authorities. After more fruitless attempts to execute him, Gabamara faces his interrogator who is revealed to be Yamada Seimen Sagiri, a Yamada clan sword tester and executioner. Sensing her skill as a calm and efficient executioner, Gabamaru experiences fear and fights back, especially after Sagiri asserts that he is still deeply in love with his wife. She abruptly offers a full pardon and government protection for himself and his wife in exchange for fulfilling a death-defying mission. He must go to Shinsenkyo, a legendary land rumored to hold the elixir of immortality, and retrieve the elixir in competition with other death row criminals. Gabamaru agree and Sagiri recalls her early training as an executioner, and the difficulty she has had overcoming her fear and hesitation. The over 30 blindfolded condemned criminals who have volunteered for the mission are given their instructions by the 11th Sei Tai Shogun, Nariyoshi Tokugawa. They are shown an officer who returned from an earlier expedition but is no longer human with flowers blooming from his body. They will be each be accompanied by a Yamada Asayemo, however, they are told to reduce their numbers which causes a killing spree. While the Shogun delights in the carnage before him, Gabamaru addresses him, saying there must be a better way to make the selection. The Shogun's head guard offers a place on the mission to anyone who kills Gabamaru who is then reluctantly forced to fight for his life, brutally killing his attackers with his tied-up hands. As the names of the ten prisoners selected to go on the mission are read out, including Gabamaru, Sagiri realizes that her problem is not overcoming her fear of killing, but accepting the burden of responsibility for the lives she takes. Gabamara believes that the elixir of immortality, Tokijiku no Kaginomi, does exist after seeing the chief of the Awagakir survive a series of fatal injuries. As he and Sagiri arrive in the shore of their destination, he tells her that the elixir may not come from this place. Suddenly they come under attack from the condemned criminal Twisted Kayan, a weapons expert accompanied by the Yamada Asaman Kisho. Gabamara survives all of his attacks and brutally kills Kayan with his own weapons, even with his hands tied at Sagiri's insistence. As Kisho heads back to the boat with Kayan's severed head, he tells Sagiri that the criminals have already began killing each other and predicts that shortly almost all will be eliminated. However, this only means that the Awagaku will be sent in their place. After Kisho's departure, Gabamaru attacks Sagiri with a sword so he can find the elixir unhindered but finds himself unable to deliver the killing blow. They both realize that he is not hollow and still has emotions as a result of his love for his wife that accepting emotions is not a weakness but a strength. Elsewhere, the criminal Tamiya Gantet Sosai is stung by what looks like a human-faced butterfly and quickly severs his left hand which withers and sprouts flowers. Both he and Gabamaro are confronted by strange monsters and simultaneously surrounded by bizarre creatures. Gantet Sosai tells his Yamada Asaman Fuchi why he was sentenced to death and sets out to eliminate the other criminals to simplify his search for the elixir. Meanwhile, Gabamaru and Sagiri who are being menaced by various huge fantastical creatures with Buddha-like features. When one attacks and injures Gabamaru, he realizes that they are surrounded and confronted by numerous opponents with unknown abilities. He destroys most of them, uncharacteristically protecting Sagiri in the process, until Yamada Seimen Genji arrives, accompanied by Yamada Seimen Senta with the ninja criminal Yuzuraha, who offers to work with Gabamaru in exchange for information she gathered on the creatures by experimenting on Moro Makaya the apostate before she killed him, leaving Genji without his charge. As they talk, Sagiri loses consciousness and collapses. Meanwhile, Aza Chobiai and his younger brother Yamada Asame and Toma face similar group of monsters. Aza is feels he is in control of the situation until he is wounded and Toma is captured. He then cuts the monsters to pieces of berserker rage. Sagiri wakes up to find they have moved away from the butterflies whose poisonous scales cause her to faint. Gabamara tell the others that while exploring alone, he discovered that many plants on the island were former samurai sent by the shogun. Senta also shares knowledge he gained since arriving. Genji suggests that he replace Sagiri in guarding Gabamaru as she lacks battle skills but she refuses. Meanwhile, Yamada Asaman Tenza tries to leave the island by boat with the criminal Nuragai, last of the Senka people 
but they are blocked by a graveyard of samurai ships and are attacked by monsters and as they try to escape across the wrecks, they come across Yamada Asame and Kisho, still alive but with flowers sprouting from his body. Nurugai loses heart with the guilt of feeling responsible for the demise of the Sanka and waits to die. But Tenza refuses to give up and together they fight their way back to the island. While drying their clothes, Tenza discovers that Nurugai is a young woman, and they decide to circle the island to see if they can find an escape route. Gabamara gives Sagiri the confidence to stand her ground and become a samurai against Genji's instance that she should become a wife and mother. Suddenly Rokuroda, the giant of bison, appears and tears a large piece out of Genji's body and when Sagiri tries to help him, she is saved by Gabamara. Gabamara tries to assess his Rokuroda's abilities, but he is unable to find any weakness. The dying Genji realizes that Sagiri has treading the middle path between heart and reason, weakness and strength, and gives her his blade. She uses it to slice off one of Rokuroda's fingers, and together she and Gabamaru attack him however they are completely overwhelmed. Gabamaru is forced to use his Ninpo ascetic blaze mode techniques to attack Rokuroda with balls of flame. The jungle catches fire, producing smoke which starves Rokuroda of oxygen and he collapses to his knees enabling Sagiri to decapitate him. The island's giant monsters are attracted by the flames so Gabamaru and Sagiri free from the inferno in the direction from which the monsters came and they, they meet up with Senta and Yuzuriha and the small group arrives at a village. Meanwhile, after slaughtering the monsters who attack them, Chobei Aza and his younger brother Toma come across two naked androgynous lovers kissing in the jungle. Chobei and Toma are confronted by the two Tensin who see as humans as interlopers. Gabamara's group encounter a young girl, but when he pursues her he finds that she has powerful abilities and is protected by a large wooden being. After they are both defeated by Gabamaru and Yuzuraha, the being offers to take them to a village. There, the wooden being Hoko and his young companion, Mei, offer them fruit, and he tells them that they call the place Kotaku on the island of Shinsenkyo. The island is divided into three regions, the shore and forest is called Aishu, the village is in Hojo, and the elixir, Tan, is located in the central region of mists called Horai, which is inhabited by the godlike Tensin who are immortal. Meanwhile, Chobei and Toma are easily defeated by the two lovers who are Tensin, and the brothers are dropped into a pit to be turned into flowers and become the source of Tan. Tenza recalls his early life as a street urchin when he was taken in as a student by the master Yamada Asaman Shayan who recognized his potential. He and Nurugai continue their circuit of the island, but are interrupted by an androgynous Tenzin flame-colored hair which easily casts Tenza aside. He uses his speed to slice at the Tenzin, severing its head, but it regenerates itself and pursues them. They are saved momentarily by the blind but experienced Cheyenne who again decapitates the Tenzin and explains that he killed the criminal Akajinu when she tried to seduce him, but then could not find a current to lead him off the island. Suddenly, the Tenzin strikes again striking Cheyenne in the throat, and when Tenza attacks with his sword, he receives a fatal blow. In a last desperate effort to save Cheyenne and Nurugai, Tenza attacks the Tenzin with his bare hands giving his life so that they can escape. Gabamaru becomes impatient and heads off alone towards Horai at the center of the island, passing immobile trees chanting sutras. He reaches the temple where he is confronted by the same Tenzin who defeated the Aza brothers. Gabamaru uses all his skills and techniques against the Tenson, but it quickly regenerates itself, so in desperation he launches multiple rapid attacks which eventually succeed. As the Tenson expires, it is consumed by flowers which form a large half-plant and half-human monster who attacks and grabs Gabamaru who recalling his training, uses his remaining energy to deal the strongest attack he can, creating a reprieve and is then rescued by Mei. Meanwhile, the seven Tenson Shandi Samantabhadra, Dadi Aksho, Jiujuan Amaghavadra, Sagacious Dashing Ratna, Yuan Jun Tathata, Gong Gong Manjusri, and Deified Dijuan Kundi gather to review the situation and partake of the elixir. Hoko offers to take the others to find Mei and Gabamaru, and explains that all humans who inhabited the island were eventually transformed into plants. As Gabamaru recovers consciousness, he is met by Tamiya Gantetsu Sai and Yamada Asaman Fuchi. In his present condition, Gabamaru is too weak to battle Gantetsu Sai and Fuchi, and after he describes the Tenson and their powers they agree to collaborate. Meanwhile, Senta concludes that the island is not the real Shinsenkyo, and the mixed-up deities are not real gods, 
similar to the construct of Moro Micaiah, founder of a new religion who is plotting to overthrow the Shogun, thus theorizing that someone created the island. Gabumara questions Mei about the Tensin and she mentions they possess Tao while at the same time Hoko tells his group about Tao and how it is like the flow of Qi, a combination of yin and yang and centered on the lower Dantian, below the navel. Elsewhere, while Nurigai presses Shayan to teach her how to use a sword they come under attack from a group of mindless monsters. Meanwhile, Chobei slowly drags Tami from the pit of grasping flowers where they are met by a doshi, a sentient monster unlike the mindless Sashin, who has been sent to investigate the human interlopers. Chobei attacks the doshi while Tami slashes at an approaching group of Sashin, however the doshi strikes Chobei a deadly blow. Chobei recovers to attack the doshi again and seems to have acquired some regenerative ability after being in the pit of flowers and is also able to detect the Tao within the doshi and defeat it. Elsewhere, as Gabamaru and Gantet Sasai fight the Sashin, Mei repeats the words, strong and weak. Suddenly, a half-human, half-insect doshi appears to capture Mei whom he wants to return to the Horai. Gabamaru uncharacteristically acts to protect her but he and Gantet Sasai come under attack from swarms of insects. Fuchi understands what Mei is saying and explains to Gabamaru that Tao is a balanced weakness and strength, so to see the Tao emanating from the doshi, he must acknowledge his weaker side. Gabamaru struggles to do so, but he begins to see the Tao flowing around the two doshi and is able to defeat them. Meanwhile, Hoko leads Sigiri and the others to the gates of the Horai where a Tenson with magenta hair summarily removes Hoko's wooden head. The Tenson is revealed to be the peony Jyoju in Amighavajra and says that Tan is not an elixir, because if humans consume it they turn into plants. Yuzuraha slashes Amighavajra to pieces, and then tries to poison it, but the Tenson regenerates itself each time. Eventually, Sigiri, Senta and Yuzuriha utilize their own knowledge and experience of Tao to jointly attack and defeat the Tenson although it leaves them injured and exhausted. Some time later, as Senta proposes that they find a way to save the other members of the expedition, the Tenson becomes a giant flower and fires a dart-like projectile at Yuzuriha. Senta throws himself in front of her and is hit instead. He begins sprouting flowers and imagines that he is painting a picture of a dancing Yuzuriha holding a parasol. The monster then fires a series of darts at the two women which are intercepted by Shion who appears to save them and explains to Sigiri that he is using his awareness of Tao to counteract the power of the Tenson. however he is unable to defeat it himself and is wounded by its darts. Akajuna cuts the sprouting flowers from Senta temporarily reviving him. Then Sigiri and Akajuna both attack the Tenson from the front enabling Shion to attack from behind. They are unsuccessful until Senta suggests they attack its ovule which is the vulnerable point of the plant-like Tenson. The badly wounded Shion manages to then strike a killing blow with his sword, and Yuzuriha consoles Senta as he dies. Sugiri proposes the Yamada Seimen, and criminals must cooperate if they are to leave the island alive. As they discuss their next steps, both Shion and Yuzuriha question Sugiri's relationship with Gabamaru and speculate that what motivates him may be a deception and that his wife could not exist. Meanwhile, Gabamaru awakens after collapsing from exhaustion and finds that he cannot remember the name or face of his wife or whatever happened leading to this point. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then consider subscribing and liking it, and don't forget to check out my merch store and Ko-Fi page. Your support will be much appreciated.